Hey, how's it going, Brandon? It's me, Zach, again, and we are going to be going through another video today. This video, we are going to be covering the Pidgeotto and Oranguru deck. This is a deck that Grant Manley used to come second at the Atlantic City Regional Championships, and then he also made top eight at the most recent Knoxville City Ch or Regional Championships in Masters. This is one of the best decks in the game. You might not face it too often in tournament because it is difficult for junior players to play but it's definitely one of the better decks in the game and you might run across it on PTCGO or at some other events. It is definitely a possibility that you could play against this deck. It's probably one of the top three decks available right now. So jumping into this deck, I'm gonna give you the idea of how to play this deck. And I'm gonna give you the idea how to play this deck so you understand if you face against it or if you're interested in playing it yourself, feel free to let me know if you're interested in playing in any of these other decks that are not Pikachu, Zekrom. And I'd be glad to help you out, show you exactly what those decks do. I will be giving you some tips on how to beat this deck if you do run across it with your personalized Pikachu, Zekrom GX deck in this format. So jumping into it, we'll go one by one of what these cards can offer. Now you might <clears throat> have noticed that in some of my other deck profiles that I've showcased to you, what ditto can offer a deck like this ditto can evolve into a stage one pokemon and basically the only pokemon it can evolve into in this matchup is pidgeotto um, so once during your turn you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them into your hands put the other card <clears throat> on the bottom of their deck so this is the way that they this is kind of the consistency engine of their deck to make sure this deck can run similar to how your deck has didene to draw extra cards so this is basically just an extra Pidgey, and Pidgeys are basically just the Pokemon that you evolve into Pidgeotto. Oranguru is the main Pokemon of this deck, and it's basically the only Pokemon that should attack. They use resource management to put cards from their discard pile on the bottom of their deck. So they use combinations of cards to control exactly what you have. They'll use Reset Stamp to shuffle your hands into your deck, especially after you draw a few prize cards. They'll use Crushing Hammers to remove your energies, They'll use Mars to discard cards from your to discard a card from your hands. They'll use Jesse and James to discard more cards from your hands. They can play multiple supporters a turn with Lieutenant Surge strategy if they're behind on prize cards. And this deck does not draw prize cards. And then they'll use Chip Chip Ice Axe to put cards on top of your deck, so you can never have the cards that you want on top of your deck. So you're just always going to dead draw. <clears throat> and then they could use this every single turn with resource management. Keep on putting cards from the bottom onto the, from their discard pile onto the bottom of their deck, and then they can draw them with Pidgeotto. So that's exactly how this deck works. They have Jirachi as an additional consistency engine, so they can send it up after every single time you knock out an Oranguru. And that will allow you to basically get, it will allow them to get item, trainer, supporter, any card. So any of these cards they could grab. Then grab all of those, except the Recycle Energy. So they'll grab all of those cards off of the Jirachi. Articuno is a way if you build a lot of energies on one of your Pokemon, they can use Legendary Ascent to switch it with their active Pokemon and attach a Water Energy to it and then use Cold Crush GX to discard all energies. So you gotta be careful of that as well. Acrobike is an additional consistency engine for this deck. So they can look at the top two cards of their deck and it works great with resource management to try to draw into those three cards. Chip Chip Ice Axe I already went over. It's to look at the top three cards of your deck and then <clears throat> they can rearrange it so you will always dead draw. Crushing Hammers, they're just gonna keep on looping those back until they run you out of energies. Then they'll try to deck you out. Custom Catchers, they could bring up whichever Pokemon they like and they can always get these cards back just so that you're always in a position of where you can attack, you don't have energies, you can't control what's on top of your deck, and you have zero or limited cards in your hand. Palpat can get back some of their supporters, and the supporters that they play are Cynthia, Jesse and James, Lieutenant Surge, Mars, Professor Arms Lecture, and Tate and Liza. <clears throat> All of those have different kind of strategies within this deck. Pokegear can grab those same supporters, so they're making their deck a little bit more consistent already gone over reset stamp with you we got power plant so power plant can shut off your abilities against your pikachu and zekrom gx deck power plant will shut off your zora it will shut off your dedene 
They got Cynthia, just sometimes they need to shuffle and draw. Their hand might be a little big. They only play one. Jesse and James, both players have to discard two cards from their hands. But you you would have to discard first if you if they play the Jesse and James against you. They can always get cards back with a Rangaroo, so they're not really worried about it. They are just trying to discard cards from your deck. And like I said, this deck is not meant to draw prize cards. This deck is meant to try to deck you out. Lieutenant Surge's strategy, once you knock out a few of their Pokemon that you have right here, they are totally going to use Lieutenant Surge strategy to play multiple supporters a turn. So using Lieutenant Surge strategy, Mars, and then also using Jesse and James so they can draw cards, discard cards from your hands, and they can get them back every single turn with Palpad. Mars is a great way for them to draw some cards and discard a random card from your opponent's hand. They are the ones that choose the card, but they do not look at your hand. Whereas for Jesse and James, you are the one who chooses the card out of your hand. They can randomly grab that energy. They're trying to get rid of all your energies. A great GX attack to use against this deck would be your Zorora GX's full voltage GX to get around that stuff. <clears throat> Professor Elm's Lecture. They can search your deck for up to three Pokemon with 60 HP. This is how they search out their Pokemon. They have Ditto, Pidgey, Pidgey, and they can also search out Pidgey Odo, a stage one with 60 HP. So that's how their deck sets up really quickly. Tan Liza is more or less like a Cynthia in this deck, but they can also use it to switch out of the active Pokemon. They don't have any copies of Switch. They also have a copy of a Skateboard to get around Jirachi's Stellar Wish when it's asleep. They can still retreat when they are asleep. Recycle Energy always goes back to hand when you knock out their Rangaroo, so they'll attach Recycle Energy to use with Resource Management. Then there's three copies of Water Energy to use for Resource Management, Retreating their Pokemon, or Cold Crush GX. So altogether, like I said, they're going to use Rangaroo's Resource Management to loop back cards that you don't want to see, Crushing Hammers, Pow Pads, Pow Pads that can get back Lieutenant Surge, Mars, and Jesse and James. We got Power Plant here. So the Pokemon GX have no abilities. And they're just going to shut things off using Custom Catchers, bringing up Pokemon you don't want to see in the active position. And Chip Chip Ice Axe to control your top decks. They can do this each and every turn. So it's something you definitely have to be careful of. In this matchup, you basically don't... It's not a very good matchup for you. But sometimes this deck can get a little bit inconsistent if they got Tails on Crushing Hammer or if they just draw into the wrong cards at the wrong time. So it's one of those things where their deck might get a little bit inconsistent at times, and you just want to just attack, 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 play around with your energies. I do showcase in the next videos. So it's definitely one of those things <clears throat> that if you play against this deck, be careful. It is very annoying. If they get you into a perfect lock, it's likely best for you to scoop that game so I'll show you exactly how that works in the next video. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me during our next coaching session or ask your brother Ryan. Um, this deck, again, it's not very common in juniors, but it does pop up from time to time. It is a really cool way to play the game. Your opponent will not be drawing any prize cards and they just try to deck you out. So the next video is going to be pretty cool, showcasing exactly what this deck can do. So I hope you enjoy that, Brandon, and uh, stay tuned and watch that one. Thanks for watching.